everyone, I'm Camilla Sanders, Events Manager at the Earl and Rachel Smith Strand Theater, Cobb County's only historic theater and your local nonprofit right here in Marietta, Georgia. On behalf of the Strand staff and board, thank you so much for your support of the theater during this difficult time. We ask that you continue your support by visiting our website, strandmarietta.org, or by clicking on the donate link right here on Facebook and our other social media. You can also build your own fundraiser by visiting our website. There's very easy instructions if nonprofit performing arts is a passion for you like it is for me. We have a very exciting night lined up and we are blown away by our volunteer artists and the time they have spent on this project. Thank you so much to our talented musicians and actors. We could not have done this without you. After the show, there will be a Zoom call meet and greet, and we hope that you will connect with all of us later on Zoom. Tonight, we're gonna to present to you the 1919 Ziegfeld Follies, a long running yearly series of theatrical reviews that took elements from vaudeville and the popular music of the time. Now, I wanna take you back to over a hundred years to 1919. World War I has just ended the Spanish flu is running rampant with no end in sight. Sitting at home gloomy and isolated, you hear on the news that in just a couple of weeks, the government is taking your alcohol away. That's right, prohibition starts in July. And as we all know, there's no fruit like forbidden fruit. All you wanna do is go out to parties and dress up and hang out with your friends. Now we know how the jazz age was born. June 16th, 1919 was the opening night of the Ziegfeld Follies at the New Amsterdam Theater on 42nd Street in the heart of New York. Irving Berlin, Burt Williams, Marilyn Miller, and Eddie Cantor were the anchors of this team that would inspire the masses with comedy and music for 171 performances, the longest of any Follies up to that time and considered by many to be the best of all the Ziegfeld Follies. You will find the humor in the songwriting is a little different than today, but one thing remains. They all use their music and their art to lift their audiences in times of despair. If there's one thing we can learn while we're all at home is that we need to find our own art and use it to connect with others and lift each other. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy the Ziegfeld Follies of 1919. crave your condescension and attention while I mention my intentions and what I intend to do. It is really necessary to be very culinary and a merry chef to cook up a review. It takes a little toasting and a little bit of roasting, and the dressing must be rare and smart. So accompanied by a ballad, I will mix a folly salad, give you an example of my art. First, I ask a little lettuce with the musical refrain. <laughs> it's essential for to get us the results we want to gain. <laughs> with the other things you mingle, you must add a little spice. There must be a tiny tingle, not too naughty. Nice. Of course you put in oil with a melody to soothe. To produce a folly salad, everything must run quite smooth. Don't forget to add some sugar. It must be a little sweet. A sweetie is essential if the salad be complete. You must have some paprika. It must be a little pep. Just a dash of class and smartness. Oh, be careful. Uh, watch your step. There must be a little chicken, young and tender, I admit. They must be alive and kicking. That salad be a hit. Now, of course, there's a reason for the salt and pepper, too. But the salad must be a season, so I'll just... Throwing these two. All year I do the mixing, the dressing and the fixing. A big production can't be done with haste. To make it appetizing, entertaining, enterprising. And try my best to please the public taste. She appears every year to help this old world on its way. 
like a bird in the spring to frolic and sing, to smile and be happy and gay. She's merry and bright, a dream of delight, the musical comedy queen. So with joyful intent to you, I present the Follies of 1919. dog chasing a poor little cat like that. Now I'm mad at you. Didn't I tell you not to fight? Yes. And not to chase cats at night? Yes. Well, why did you do it? I don't know. The next time, I'm gonna put you out, no matter how late at night. Then the dog catchers will get you, and they'll put you in a pound among a lot of little mice and they'll make you sleep on the ground. Then maybe you'd get the mange, and you wouldn't want that to happen, would you? No. Now, you must be good. Give me your word. Yes. Are you sure? Yes. And hope to die. Now, you're a smart dog, aren't you? Yes, indeed. You know why? Because you're my dog. Now, tell the ladies and gentlemen your name. Rover. What's that? Rover. Rover. Marvelous. Perfectly wonderful. Now, tell the ladies and gentlemen my name. Ruby. What? Ruby. Oh, Ruby. Wonderful, wonderful. you come here I'm hungry are you what would you like to eat ham ham why there isn't any ham around here how would you like a nice big pan of milk no or a big chocolate soda no well what do you want whiskey what did you say you wanted whiskey? Yes. Well, I'll see if I can get you some. Why, it's after the 1st of July. You can't get any whiskey. What? I said it's after the 1st of July and you can't get any whiskey. Little Johnny Brown never wears a frown When they say the country's going dry Others pull their hair, Johnny doesn't care He's got everybody guessing why When I said how quiet things would be Johnny said perhaps and not for me the wine to have a wonderful time while they still make those beautiful girls. Adam and Eve never tasted champagne, but still they were able to go out and raise cane for the sweet little miss who knows the right way to kiss. She can set any brain in the world. Everybody's feeling bad cause liquor must go. But you can always buy yourself a little low crow So you don't need the wine to have a wonderful time While they still make those beautiful girls Oh, you don't need the wine to have a wonderful time While they still make those beautiful girls 
Adam and Eve never tasted champagne. But still they were able to go out and race cane for the sweet little miss who knows the right way to kiss. She can set any brain in the world. Lots of people like a cordial after dessert. But give me something cordial that is wrapped in a skirt so you don't need the wine to have a wonderful time while they still make those beautiful girls. Scene, bull ring of Spanish atmosphere. At rise, a crowd of boys gaily dressed standing behind rails. Give heed to the great announcer and listen to what I say, for else the royal bouncer will hurl you thither on your way. Two rival lords are meeting to throw the bull for a lady's hand. For common, both are competing, the sweetest Spanish mackerel of our land. The bull is a beast most ferocious, and the Toreadors thus far have met. No goes his man most treacherous, but some bull thrower sure will get him yet. <laughs> This is not the bull. Even though he falls short of a noble bull, I will fight him because he dares to love Carmen, my beautiful Spanish onion. Signor Siapi wishes me to announce that his weight for July 4th is 188 pounds ringside. That weight is without the medals. <laughs> for that, I give you this. Meet me Friday. With great pleasure, I introduce Senorita Carmen, Madrid's most beautiful belladonna. And now, the bull, the grandest specimen from the Miora Ganaderia. He has 49 Toreadors to his credit and expects to make it 50 before he is turned into canned beef. My God, the bull! Bull looks over at Carmen. She beckons to come to her, showing it something to eat. Carmen feeds it, then comes out of the box with a three-legged stool and a milk pail goes towards the bull, and takes position as if to milk the bull. Announcer stops her. Ay, caramba! That is not a lady bull! to see. 
Enter the waiter. I am the waiter, the champ hesitator. I make it my business to serve. Believe me, I'm wiser than Bill, the ex-Kaiser. He ought to have had half my nerve. You need a reorder? I just go away on a trip. Some folks have to pay to move, or they engage me. But I am always there for the tip. Enter the janitor. I'm the king feeler, apartment house ruler, the janitor fellow, you see. The servants all hate me, the tenants berate me, their kicks are sweet music to me. I'm there with the bowling, an artist at stalling, I'll be in the senate someday. I know how to treat him, to cool him and heat him, in a regular janitor's way. Enter the check hat boy. I'm the hat checker, your best bankroll wrecker. You find me wherever you go. My job is to nab you, to tackle and grab you, and separate you from your dough. I'm your best annoyer and pleasure destroyer, till I get your hat and your coat. A cheap petty grafter to get what I'm after and get nearly everyone's goat. Enter the taxi driver. I'm Merciless Maxi, the guy with the taxi. You've all been up against me. Like little Jack Horner, I'm on every corner. The James boys had nothing on me. For nothing is sweeter than watching the meter. And I get a thrill when I skid. I may be an outsider, but I'm on a rough rider. A maxi, the taxi cab kid. Enter now the servant girl. I'm Finicky Penny, and I get your nanny the servant you've all heard about. I'm known as a kicker because I'm particular and want my four days a week out. I won't do no cooking or fancy dress necking, no washing or ironing from me. My mistress, I wrote her, I must have a meter, and hundred a week is my fee. We're the unbearable, perfectly terrible. 
popular pests you meet. Always precarious, habits nefarious, awfully hard to beat. We get away with war today in the grand old USA than all the Bolsheviki, they say. So give us credit, boys. It is 1919, and tonight at the Ziegfeld Follies, we are going to hear Irving Berlin's wonderful new song. Johnny was bashful and shy, nobody understood why Mary loved him. All the other girls passed him by. Everyone wanted to know. Such a bow with a twinkle in her eye. She made this reply. It's not so 
I was strolling out one evening by the silver moon when I heard somebody serenading a familiar tune. So I stopped a while to listen, not a word I wanted to miss. It was just some. While traveling through Turkey in my dreams, I chanced to stray right into a harem, and it seems they let me stay. I spoke to the Sultan's favorite wife. Before I fled I asked her how she liked harem life Here's what she said Living in a harem What a life Ne'er a thought of care or strife Waiting on the Sultan, night and day, 
guard over me. Oops, I'm the guy who guards the harem. <laughs> and I wouldn't trade a million for my job. Escape 
can't escape. She's in your memory like a morning night and noon. She will leave you and then come back again. A pretty girl is just like a pretty too. We're in the office of an osteopath on the 19th floor of the downtown buildings with high office buildings just opposite. On the window, there's a sign reading, Dr. Cheeseboro Simpson, osteopath. There is no use talking, Miss Swan. This osteopathy is certainly booming the craze. And here I've been an osteopath just a week and business is flourishing. It must be. We're turning them away. Good morning. What can I do for you? Where's the Ostermore? Uh, the what? The Ostermore? Who? Uh, do you mean osteopath? Uh, osti. Osti. Os uh, osteopath. I'm Dr. Simpson. Uh, what can I do for you? I have a vicious attack of dandruff. I don't treat dandruff. Have you any ailment? I was hurt last night. How were you hurt? A trolley car hit me. Where did the trolley car hit you? Oh, doctor. Yes, you must tell the dear doctor everything. <laughs> oh, doctor, doctor, well, when the trolley car hit me, if I had been in an automobile, it would have ruined my license. Then you desire a treatment? I love a good treatment. I must ask a few questions. Uh, take this down, Miss Swan. Uh, what is your name? Percival Fingersnapper. Fingersnapper. Born? Yes, sir. Good. Uh, married? Last Tuesday. Children? Don't be a damn fool. Business? Terrible. And what is your occupation? Baha. What? Ba. Ha. Are you a foreigner? No. Baha. Uh, oh, you're a bellboy. Yes, sir. You know, I, I want to take your pulse. Cooperation is rather low. Uh, my, what a pulse. Take it again, doctor. Take a deep breath and say, me, 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 me. You, 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 you. No, me, 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 me. No, me, me. That's it. A little higher through the nose, the nasal tone. Now, me, 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 through the nose. It won't come out of the nose. Now, try this good and clear. Ma, ma. Ma, ma. 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 A higher, higher. Ma. Ma. A higher. Ma. Ma. No, no, no. Just ma. Ma. Just ma. Ma. Sweet mama. Sweet mama. 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 Papa. Papa. Mama, papa. Papa, mama. Now try this. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Kitty, kitty, kitty. Now you're shy. What's the doctor? Ah, oh, I'm shy, kitty. Open your mouth. Say, ah. Uh, uh. Say, ah, oh, with a broad ah. Uh. Uh, 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 you need some other flavor? Young man, I'm sorry to inform you. Your eyes are bad. You're liable to go blind in an hour. You may never go blind still. You've got bad eyes. Think.
things turn black in front of you all of a sudden, don't they? <laughs> what is it, Doctor? I can sit in a restaurant at night and I'm feeling fine. The minute the waiter comes with a check, everything grows dark in front of me. And then you have a violent headache that follows this dizzy spell. Yes, I have headaches all the time. I've got a headache right now. What can I do for it? Why don't you do as I do? When I have a headache, I go home and my wife kisses me and the headache disappears. What time will your wife be home? Young man, this is serious. Take off your clothes. What? Take off your clothes. What kind of place is this? Oh, that's all right. She understands. Oh, it's one of those. <sighs> You have a beautiful view here. The 15th floor. Get up on the table, young man. The doctor rubs Percival's head gently, pinching his cheek, repeating his business. Ah! Oh. Yep, yeah, yeah, sir, a car hit you. Kiss me. The doctor gets a hold of Percival, wrestling with him. The doctor gets up on the table, knees on his chest, and pushes his arms. What did you say your name is, doctor? Simpson. I thought it was Samson. The doctor rubs at the side of the belt line, discovers a lump, tries to rub the lump, and is interrupted several times by Percival. My goodness, you've got a lump here. It's a good thing you came to Dr. Simpson when you did. I'll rub the lump out. You can't rub it out. Why can't I? It's my watch. The doctor pulls out a watch and throws it on the floor. It breaks. The sound of the spring unwinds. The doctor grabs Percival's leg and twists it back into place. He tries to put the heel in his face several times to let go of the leg. Percival swings his leg around and the doctor bends both legs back and forth. And how are the joints? I don't know. I'm a stranger in town. The doctor grabs his left leg and runs it around the table twice, putting the leg around his neck. Now I want to impact your oblong gutter. Never! Mm -hmm. You're a funny osteopath. You don't seem to do any good. Why don't you crack my bones? Now you've only had the number one treatment, the mild course. Now comes the number two. I'll ask you to relax, please. The doctor bangs Percival's head down on the table. He grabs Percival and puts him through that terrible ordeal picks Percival up and carries him around the back of the table. After it is ended, Percival jumps off the table. How long have you been an osteopath? One week. You can become an osteopath yourself. I'd love to get even with somebody. Well, I need an assistant. The next patient that enters this office, I'm going to allow you to treat. The next patient is mine? Yes, sir. Enter a lady visitor. She goes to the stenographer, who rises to greet her. Percival, in the meantime, sneaks up to her from behind the table, grabs her, and throws her on it. Get up on that table! <laughs> Cheeseboro! Cheeseboro! Help! Save me! The doctor goes to her rescue, grabs Percival, and drops him out the window. The doctor looks out at the window. Ladies remain right. Where she passes by. Boys all roll their eyes and begin 
a day is born, July the 1st, and with it comes a shock. John Barleycorn, who quenched your thirst, passed out at 12 o'clock. The mourners come from far and near, their bitter tears to shed. July the 1st, prohibition's here, and alcohol. Alcohol, alcohol, sorry to see you go. Alcohol, alcohol, oh, how I'll miss you so. Fare thee well, fare thee well, places in a padded cell. Poor, the country's going to hell. Now that she's going, try, 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 we hate to say goodbye. What are we going to do now? What are we going to do? Gone are the beer saloons, and we went with them too. The future now looks very black, because the future points to red milk pies and tennis shirts and sarsaparilla joints. Where are we going to work now? Maybe before we are through, we'll have to join the soda water crew. We'll have rough upon our lips and hands upon our hips. Heaven help us when we do. Gee, it's gonna be tough for the course ladies from now on. Now are we gonna wrestle a Rolls Royce from a Jack or John? A little bit of Hag and Hag while we were having sup would help to make the tide as Ebenezer loosen up. But now it's going to be tougher. Now we're going to suffer. Now that the town is going dry. I want my beer. I want my beer. And there are no two ways about it. I want my beer. I want my beer. And I won't do any work without it. The working man must have his hand to do his work from year to year. Oh, how I wish again that I was a fish again. Swimming. In an ocean of beer. This is the land of the free that awoke when the U-boats were sinking and told us go o'er the sea and protect her liberty. Now I'm just as true as can be to my land, but I cannot help but thinking that I should have stayed in Paris where no one dares interfere with what you're thinking.
as a girl he could be. Out in Flanders she came to my aid, a salvation lassie is she. Strange to say I've met her before, in the city's my I'd be going to war. I call to my tambourine girl. I saw her on Broadway with a tambourine in her hand. Follow on, follow on. Was her song on? To the passers by, I wanted to tell her, but I feared she not understand. I bid a fond goodbye to her name. One day in France, I met her again, and I told her that I loved her. I saw her on Broadway with the tambourine in her hand. Follow on, follow on. Was her song on cry to the passers by? I wanted to tell her, but I feared she knows. Understand, I bid a fond goodbye to her there. One day in France, I met her again, and I told her that I loved her. you to weep, for let me assure you, one and all, I'm not dead. I'm merely asleep. Someday I'll come back to you. When your laws are not so blue, when you give prohibition the shoe, say to Mr. Temperance, you're through. We'll find a new position for Mr. Prohibition. You must make him change his view. I'll come back someday with a hip hip hooray. Until I do, I'll give to you a little cocktail that is new. Okay. 